What's up gamers? Today I wanted to chat with you a little bit about uh, Diablo 4 and also Path of Exile 2. Uh, kind of wanted to maybe uh, discuss what might be happening in the future between these two ARPGs. So I've been playing the Diablo series since I was a kid. Been playing every single one of them uh, in the very early days of Blizzard when uh, Diablo 2 was just, just this incredible feat. Uh, played it hours and hours and hours, and, and for those of you that, that know or don't know, I used to play uh, competitive StarCraft as well, so I've been uh, been with Blizzard for a long time, and um, and then kind of uh, fell off the wagon because I didn't really care for StarCraft 2, played a little bit of Overwatch, uh, I just uh, they just destroyed that game, so anyways, haven't been playing too much Blizzard stuff lately, so I didn't really have high hopes for Diablo 4. But then they did the Diablo 2 remaster, and uh, they just absolutely nailed it, period. Uh, the, the, the Diablo 2 remaster was done so well. I was so impressed by it. Um, they, they stayed true to form. And then, of course, you know, Diablo 3, it just, I didn't like it. It was just too cartoony. It was like, this is Diablo. This isn't Pokemon or whatever, right? It's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to hit hard. It's supposed to be grim and you know it's supposed to be cool looking and we've got enough cutesy wootsy stuff right let's let's do something that's dark and foreboding and has a nice atmosphere to it so i didn't really have high hopes for it but then i played the the beta um the open beta closed beta and then played the server slam so i played all of the characters and so far it's shaping up to be an amazing game so the only thing that is going to be in question now is two things really. It's going to be number one. What is the end game going to be for Diablo Four? So like when I played Diablo Three, played through it once, put it down for a while, and then I was like, yeah, I'll try it again. Played it again with a different character, put it down again. There's zero. I had zero desire to play any further in the end game. I, I had no no interest to in doing so. It just wasn't that good. Wasn't that fun. So the big question is going to going to be is what are they going to do with the end game? What is the end game of Diablo 4 going to look like? Are they going to be able to compete with Path of Exile 2? Well, from what I'm hearing, they've got the Paragon system and a lot of different things, and it's going to take a long time to get to level 100 and beat the end game bosses. And, and uh, the other good news is that they're planning to uh, do their battle passes, and every time they release a battle pass, they're also going to release... Uh, an expansion. So there will be an expansion and a battle pass. And they've also stated that it is not going to be pay to win. And uh, just on a side note, if you are a gamer and you are listening to this, hearing my voice, do not ever contribute to any game that is pay to win, period. If we stop spending money on pay to win nonsense, they will stop doing pay to win nonsense. That's why they keep getting away with it. That's why Every single mobile game that exists, 99.9% .9 of them, are total garbage because they're all pay to win. None of them are, you know, they're just not worth the time and effort. You know, there's nothing that you can really play on the go as far as a true mobile game that is worth any time because they're all pay to win. So don't give these snakes that money. Don't pay and don't play these pay to win games. So the second question, of course, is... We've got the Microsoft Microsoft merger, right? Microsoft is going to be buying Activision Blizzard, which, in my opinion, is is a good good play. Uh, Blizzard's been hurting for quite some time. Um, they could use a little bit of a shakeup. And now, don't get me wrong, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Bill Gates or anything, but uh, you know, I think Microsoft's been doing good a good job of uh, bringing more things under the gaming tent. And I think it'd be a good thing if they do end up picking up. Uh, Activision Blizzard or Blizzard Activision, whatever it is, right? So if they do that, they get more funding and they get, you know, maybe a shakeup and management, things like that. And maybe they will bring a StarCraft 3 back. They have all of this intellectual property that they could be using, but they announced a while ago that they would not be continuing with StarCraft anymore. So there's no real dominant RTS anymore. And like I said, I grew up playing StarCraft. I mean, religiously, I competed at it. I went to all kinds of land tournaments and things like that. I even played on Korean TV once. And um, 
And, and this was before esports was a big thing, or, or even really a thing at all in the United States. It was still was going. It was just really starting to get get rock and rolling in Korea, but here it was still in its infancy. So um, hopefully they will bring back StarCraft Three and try to do the same thing that they're doing with Diablo Four, which is revitalizing it. But then we've got Path of Exile Two. So Path of Exile, if you haven't played that, is is hands down the successor to the the spiritual successor to Diablo Two. And um, it's a fantastic game. I played multiple seasons of it. I bought whatever season pass it is. Um, you know, I enjoy playing the game. And if I enjoy playing the game, I will buy whatever their microtransactions are if it's not pay to win, which it's not on Path of Exile. It's a little bit of a convenience thing because you're buying storage, really. But but if you're enjoying something, put money into it. Like I play League of Legends and I'll buy their little battle passes to, to you know, contribute back to the company that's doing a product that I like and not being paid to win. So so then we've got, like I said, Path of Exile 2. Path of Exile 2 is probably going to be a smashing, resounding success and has way better customization than any other ARPG. It's just an all-around all around great game. You know, there's not a whole lot that they could do to to improve the, the, the current version of Path of Exile, except maybe... <clears throat> Make it a little bit easier to theory craft and things because I mean if you've ever seen the skill tree I mean it is massive. I mean you if you're playing the game and you want to get to the end game You literally have to use a guide. I've played it for quite some time and I still have to use guides There's so they've got to figure out a way to have balance between the customization and the deep customization versus player accessibility because I'm not exactly a noob and I've played like I said several seasons of it and I still have to go through builds. I mean, it, it is just massive. The scope of it is just huge. Nothing like it's ever been done. So that being said, Path of Exile, well, it's just a little tiny company, right? Well, no, because Tencent, which is the biggest gaming company and the company in the entire world, a Chinese gaming company, they've got a, a hand in just about everything. They own a majority stake of Grinding Gears Games, which is Path of Exile's developer. So they've got big funding up, up into it too. And so they they have a vested interest in making sure that that's a resounding success as well. So I think whenever Path of Exile 2 comes out, I think that there's a good chance that it will be a competitor to Diablo 4. And if Diablo 4 drops the ball in the endgame, well, Path of Exile 2 is going to take it. So let me know what you guys think. Are you going to are you gonna play Diablo 4? Are you going to play Path of Exile 2? Who do you think is going to be the king of the ARPG? Appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and check back soon for another video. Take care.